Hey everyone, it's Sam McGuire here. Today, I just want to go into how you can discover or visualize clusters in your data or cluster patterns in your data. Now, the example I've created here is just an example. You can do this in multiple different ways, and that's, the, that's what I want to reiterate here. But the process or the logic that you run through is going to be very similar um, if you want to set it up how, how I've done it here. Now, what we're actually looking at here is I've uh, got, uh, we're looking at every single customer uh, in our data set. So there's lots of customers and I'm analyzing the customers via their profit margins and their total sales. And so if we look on the right hand side of this visualization, you'll see here that we've got a cluster of uh, high performing uh, customers or, or high sales. And um, obviously we've got you know, up here is the higher margin clients. And this is over, over time because I've got no filters on this at the moment. But what I have done here is I have created some logic which has enabled us to visualize these clusters of information. And I've built that logic based on which profit group these customers sit in. And so if you think about it, this profits doesn't actually, it does have some relation to the axes that we have placed inside here, but it's not directly related. So it enables us to build a cluster or, or create some logic. And that's the key, create some logic that then would be able to showcase where a customer sits regardless, you know, depend, but it doesn't actually depend on, say, you know, total sales or, or profit margins. Now, the, the key thing here uh, is that this profit groups does not, act, does not actually exist. It does not currently exist in the data model. So we need to build this logic to bring it in and then we can overlap. Now, as I say, this is, this is just one way that I've done it, but you could do this a number of different ways. Like one way I was thinking is that, well, maybe um, you could also look at profit growth you could look at margin growth. You could look at you know a whole variety of things. So any any type of logic you can think of, you could actually bring it. Um, you know, you could bring it in here and then try and identify. Well, um, you know, is there a pattern here? Is there is there is there a cluster of information that can really extract some insight for us? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run through how I actually created this. Now, if you look at the data model, the first thing to note is that we've, I've created a supporting table here. Now, a supporting table is is generally going to be used, sometimes can be called a parameter table, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use logic. We're going to develop some logic that integrates the supporting table into our core model. So inside of this supporting table, I'll bring it up to show you, where we're analyzing which customer group based on profitability that this these customers sit inside. And so if, if the customer has generated over $25,000 in profit, then they're going to be a top client between 20,000 and 25,000. They're going to be a good client, so on and so forth. So this could be very customized if you think about it. And what we're going to do, or what I did was in the customer table, I then utilized that supporting table and then built some logic uh, and this logic here, which integrated that into, uh, into this um, dimension that we've created. Now, some of you might say, well, we could actually develop all of that logic inside of this uh, calculated column. Yes, you absolutely could. Um, but what I find sometimes, especially, if, think about it, what if, what if your supporting table had 10 different pieces of logic that you had to work, work through? Well, maybe that might be easier to put inside a supporting table uh, and then you can then write simple logic like this, which would integrate it in. So, so there's a few things to consider there. But uh, in saying that, you could just develop a really complicated calculated column. Okay, so, so certainly if um, you if you feel like that would be a better option, you you certainly can. In this case, I haven't done it. But what we've done here is we are looking. So all I'm trying to do through this through this logic here is calculate. Okay, well, what group? What group does that customer? Does each customer sit in? And so the, gr the group is going to be returned by this value function, and then filter is what creates iteration to iterate through the logic. So we're saying, okay, well, for each different customer here, what is their total profits? Does it sit between the min and the max of any of our groups? And if it does, then return that group. And that's how I create the, created this profit groups. And then now we have this dimension, right? Now we have this dimension. We can now use it. We can use it inside our data model or inside our visualizations to identify these clusters, right? And so that's exactly what I did. So I created a, um, let's, let's recreate it from scratch. I created a scatter plot, and then I brought in, say, my profit margins into the x-axis. Actually, we'll bring it down to the y. And then I brought my sales into my x-axis. 
And then if we go customer name, so you'll see here that we, we've we created some information inside our scatter plot, but really it doesn't actually, I mean, what value does that add? I mean, it might, sorry, it might add some value. There's no, there's no denying that, but it would be much better or it, or it showcases things much better if you can somehow, somehow create uh, clusters of information. So if we, all we've got to do is just fill the point um, and change a few data colors, make sure some stand out. And so that is going to identify information inside your visuals that much more. Okay, so hopefully you can find a way to utilize this. If you want to uh, see this or, or grab this resource, you can. Uh, just requires a small investment. Check out the description. Um, but hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see how this technique evolved, how, how I actually implemented it. The supporting table is a, is a really key concept to get your head around to understand because you can integrate them in so many different ways. I mean, this is just one way. I mean, I can, I can honestly think of 10, maybe 20 different ways you could identify clusters or try and identify clusters in, inside models based on a variety of metrics. Because also, this is just one scenario, right? There's so many different scenarios that your data might, um, um, you know, might sh require you to uh, analyze. So, so this just the technique is key. That's that's certainly what I want to get across um, in in this video. Okay, so good luck, good luck with this one. All the best. Uh, until next time, I'll speak to you then.